Sunday, 11.25, 22 seconds, year 2024, ninth month, eighth day. September is the ninth month. So, brothers listening to a fucking static commercial, which is portable charging lightning bolt cables. And they were playing the chords, which sounded like, uh, you know, dance style music, more bass dominant with drums and, um, and so the brother brother automatically spontaneously started singing brother automatically spontaneously started singing the brother automatically spontaneously started singing singing um, singing with the music and fucking dealing with talking too much out in the backyard and the neighbor and all that stuff. And anyway, so this is the this is the here's the melody. <laughs> D sharp key. Sounds like the tarot card readers, readers are saying, yeah, you, you need to be more quiet, you know, and da da da. And although they're, they're not saying that, it's being, uh, the energy is saying if you want to move into 5D, you know, um, then you got to learn how to move out of 3D more, which is too much loudness. Because <laughs> that, that's the main neighbor's complaint. And it's, it's, it's fucking hard because it's become, it's become, that, that expression that, because as the, as a child, the brother was shy and insecure and always went into a fucking shell. And now that he's being able to go out to the backyard and express himself, I mean, it feels so fucking wonderful, but it gets to the point, you know, where the neighbor, one of the neighbors is just, she can't go out, go outside and work in the yard without having to put fucking headphones in your ears or whatever the fuck she was saying, so. <laughs> It's such a loud guitar and shit like that. You know, she says she can hear the loud guitar in her house. And... Thank mm -hmm. you. 
this is the weekend and Sunday and fuck got got to have the fucking door open because it gets hot as fuck in here. You gotta have fresh air. I mean, fuck. And society has got everything so fucking sardine can together. And she said, you know, if, if she had, if she was in a position, she'd just move. But she bought the fucking house and she just, she realized she'd been there two years and she didn't like it there. She didn't like it here next to me and all that stuff, but the way that I am and shit like that. And I'm thinking, well, shit, you know. God, if, if the brother just had enough money, he could just fucking buy her out, buy the house and just keep the house there with no one in it. Use it as a second house or there's a barrier for the other neighbor. But the other neighbor on the other side, I mean, they're, they're, they like to be loud. They fight and they argue, they cuss and whatever the fuck. I mean, <laughs> out in the front yard, out in the backyard.
says, ah, oh, you're crying too much, child, shut the fuck up. And then on the other side of the fence, the child says, well, the child's crying because it needs, it needs proper attention. Proper attention. <laughs> it, it needs loving motherly attention. In, in other words, it, 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 it's, instead of just telling the child to, to shut up, to actually spend time with the child and get to the bottom of why the cry is actually there, or why the volume is actually there. So that one can have a, a more proper perspective as to, you know, to say, oh, well, if, that, if that's the case, and then that, then that would be perspective on, also on the neighbor's part, to where she would realize, oh my God, I have a little child that's been stamped out too. Why am I not going out to the backyard to play? Like the neighbor kids going out the backyard to play. <laughs> but, you know, because you know, a lot of times, you know, the brother would be playing out in the backyard, you know, as, as just a cover word, a tool word to use for being loud out in the backyard or loud in the house with the music and all that stuff. You know, the brother's like, you know, how come I'm the only kid in the neighborhood that's playing? <laughs> Can look at it from that perspective. And it's just waiting for all the other kids in the neighborhood to start playing too. <laughs> you know, why are, why are they, why, were, why are all the other kids constantly allowing themselves to be shut up? 
and as hard as as hard as hard as it is for the neighbor to have to put up with a with a kid that for the first time in the neighborhood likes to likes to play, that's also an opportunity for an influence for other kids who want to start to play too, or to be loud, or go out in the backyard and to talk on all kinds of controversial subjects that you know the child has been told no, we don't talk about that in society type stuff. So you know, that's the dilemma. That 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 hits it all on the nail pretty much to be able to say all that all in one setting on a on a record. Well, at the same time, realize it too that sometimes play too much and being too loud, and too intense, and also wears the body out. And yes, it does. <laughs> that's a full. That, 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 that's an easy full miss, but you know. Um, something's pulling on the other side that says that says that that needs to happen, but it also needs to be regulated at the same time. Because <laughs> continuing to live like that, always beating the body up, which is the girl of the queen energy, which is that child that longs to play, and eventually, you know, and the brother knows this because the, the brother knows that going overboard is needed after being stepped on, but then things start to taper off things start to taper off and become more normal so in the you know just waiting for that to happen in the natural process realizing also the bad habits just don't go away overnight just don't go away overnight although having a complaining neighbor a complaining neighbor that you never know a complaining neighbor could go off the deep end anytime you know they pull a gun out and shoot someone or uh, you know they could call boyfriends in to, to have beat up parties or call authorities in you know to, to deal with the situation and all that stuff <laughs> vision and insight.
being sensitive to learn how to adjust the volume because you know one the ear can tell when it is just slightly too loud but you know that's the bad habit loudness is a bad habit but not necessarily a bad habit there's a good good side to the habit too and it could be a good habit because if the girl energy has been stepped on the expression universal universal expression that longs to come out fingertips were, ch were chopped off and then they grew back like that. society because of this <laughs> and so that's part of the reason for going out in the backyard or out in the front yard or on the microphone and singing and exposing stuff and being loud and shit <laughs> so it's quite it's quite a it's quite a predicament situation to have to be in you know this, this loudness thing that energy that wants to come on and set the record straight you know and, and share how fucking unfair this fucking situation is, is here Otherwise, the brother could get a job just like everyone else, real nice and easy, wouldn't have to know fucking extra responsibilities to show up for fucking work. And he'd spend a lot of time fucking out of here. I mean, it used to be the brother had a fucking swing, swing shift job. And so, and then she had all, I, I was at work, she was at home. And if she was at work, I was at home. <laughs> so, but still, there was the weekend and the brother and, and, and out of the blue moments where the brother would, 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 would be loud. Thank <laughs> you. 
particular feeling. You can see with the dough. sing that song how the fuck does that song royals go how the brother got to the song royals because of that being with the universal energy now all of a sudden the brother wants to have, have a hit of cannabis and at the same time, the brother woke up this morning like, oh my God, I hope you're smoking too much and all this shit. But certain moves just all of a sudden, boom, want to enter, in, enter into a certain energy and enjoy something. <laughs>
This brother has, has become so fucking outspoken and has overcome all kinds of shyness and insecurity fears. God, it's just fucking so fucking amazing. But yet, at the same time, the brother's become so fucking outspoken. You know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's like there's this energy in the air that wants to fucking just totally fucking beat it the fuck up. So once again, the brother isn't playing with any tits. This is all straight fingered stuff.
<laughs> it could be looked at that way. It could be looked at that way. Not saying that it is. It's just evidence to consider. And sometimes what appears to be a universal correction uh, could be coming from a dark side, a manipulative, very dark manipulative side. So that's something to consider too. <laughs> Too. 
Uh, that's that's another cool thing. And he's into all kinds of different styles too. So and, uh, brother got a whole lot going on for him. But he, he's kind of he kind of reminds the brother of the self, his insecure self, and the brother used to be insecure. And the brother probably, if he got in front of camera and went out in public, stuff like that, the brother would probably see he's probably kind of a lot like you know Pentecourt. And that is all strung up and tight, trying to get a point. And, and wanted to wanted to, you know, always have all these things to want to be able to, to be able to say and act ready all the time. So is Nuno Benicourt just a Russell Edward Eskew, a Russell Eskew mere reflection at a higher energetical level. As this old fucking bug starts fucking flying around in the eyes right now. And, and, and brother you know, brother did kind of say in a video in a comment, and kind of because never, never really knew who Nuno Benicourt was. And the first impression for Nuno Benicourt was he's a boy. You know, and, and that was when there was it was the Ingway J. Momstein Steve Vai. It was the Steve Vai Guitar Gods concert where he had Zach Wilde and Nuno Benicourt as guests and Sinbad Abbasi. <laughs> Sent by the boss. Secondary, but the neighbor is really concerned with is the volume 
because it gets loud in the backyard, and this probably gets loud on the guitar, and she can hear it in her fucking house and all that shit. special staged events and they get up there and they, they say what they need to say but for some reason I guess when they get in when they get in their private mode after they finish their speaking engagements they've trained themselves to, to be nice and quiet for the sake of all the other people around them probably living in the neighborhood where they're at but presidential candidates are so fucking rich they can buy big fucking acres of fucking land and go on a private land and be as fucking loud as they fucking if they as they want it doesn't fucking matter because they got all the fucking money to get enough land to not have to be in a fucking sardine can neighborhood so look at the dilemmas there <laughs>
And there could be a good side to the debate too. The debate. side to voting and a bad side for voting. <laughs> Exposing everything, 
sharing information, all with a good heart intention, but also at the same time realizing that some can consider this as disturbing the peace, though. But is it really disturbing the peace? Does the, does the peace actually need to be disturbed? And, it, and it not necessarily, and is it being mislabeled instead of calling it dis disturbing the peace? It would be called the child that's been longing to, to cry out and needs to cry out and needs, a, and needs an appropriate uh, response instead of a shut up, a quick shut up. I don't want to have to deal with you crying child. Most mothers in their right mind, if their child is crying, they will sit down with the child and figure out what's going on with the child. And then look to bring a solution to all the crying. Well, what's the solution? Treasury access, credit to the bankruptcies, all the doctors assume jurisdiction, all that shit. The gay, the gay state, lesbian, warrior state nanny, the smack, smack king, the whole nine yards. A solution to all that. A whole new way of living, entering into uh, universal equality. flat part on his finger more than he's ever had to use it before. <laughs> so he's learned how to use the finger in a different way. <laughs> to, to slowly get the tip back into hardness. And, you know, it's less tendersome on the flat parts now. So this is going back and forth between the E note, the F note and the E note. Closer for the A note. So, and it's the A note here. Fourth string, seventh fret, A note. And then this is this is like the Momstein song.
is keeping the A song, the, the riff, or lick, or song part, whatever one wants to call it. Thank <laughs> you. 
causes someone to be in that mood to want to win, which is the old habit, the societal habit way to live, is to win. You know, you know, and that would be the bad side to elections, irregardless of who's being voted for. It's always based on winning something. Although, you know, sometimes it is a good thing to win something. You know, like to win one's health <laughs> instead of losing the sickness. I mean, one could look at it that way. And of course, this is one of the rounder picks, is the gator. These picks right here, these seem to be hitting the fucking... No, brother never had any picks like this before. These fuckers are sharp. Look at that. Sharp. This is the flow pick. Look how sharp it is compared. Look at the difference. And this is the turtle. This is considered the turtle pick. Or the relaxation pick. The turtle isn't just the slow one, it's also the relaxed one, which, which relaxation could actually cause the turtle to win the race. You know, the, the old story, the, 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 tur the tortoise, the turtle versus the hare or the rabbit. And the rabbit was too busy, you know, being neurotic and he ended up losing the race to the turtle that was just going at a nice, steady, relaxed pace. <laughs> Although it's hard to get used to this different sharpness on the pick, once it gets used to it, it's settled in. Oh my god, it's way more fucking accurate. so much easier to chop fucking wood. <laughs> and this brother knows from wood chopping experience. This brother has chopped wood for many fucking seasons. Ever since he went off electricity back in 2012. And, and still chops wood every fucking winter today. Because the brother ain't got enough money to run any other type of heating in here. <laughs> And then 
the volume wants to come in with all that enjoyment. It's almost like clearing all, the, all kinds of negativity in the air. <laughs> To look at it that way. Although it can be considered irritating, though. copy of that go, go get the book right now and show it on the screen for all to see <laughs> and the brother used to go on public access television in Lane County and show the book to everyone and guess what happened one year with the yellow phone book you know the, the yellow pages phone book that's passed around every year to everyone's doorstep which by the way hasn't been passed around here in the last the last uh, Three years, two years, the yellow book has not not been passed around. The brother has received no yellow books on the front, no yellow pages, yellow books, and it could be because everything's wanting to wanting to transition to digital. And so, if anyone wants to know where anything's at, you go to the to the smartphone. But uh, that might not be a good idea because banks are wanting to turn everyone's signatures into digital signatures. And when this brother goes to the bank, he says, no, 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 I, the brother prefers the paper receipt to sign. And so the banker realizes this, and so they say, all right, well, here's, your pa here's the paper receipt to sign the paper receipt. To, to, to keep things from slipping off into pure digital electronic robot living. That's the reason behind it. <laughs> But anyway, the brother's going to go get this book, The Gospel Solution. considered vital literature right here evidence that's all it is it just it's considered a vital evidence the reason it's considered vital evidence is because this this evidence is not mainstream yet it's not mainstream that's that's why it's considered vital but this book right here gives insight to a, a, a more well-rounded perspective to the modern interpretation to the Bible, the modern interpretation, which the modern interpretation is still a spin-off from the astrology interpretation, which used to be known 
many thousands of years before Constantine and the board members at the Council of Nicaea, the county state board members, they voted in a new interpretation to the old astrology version to this to to the Bible, which this book, once again, gives a different perspective to the Vatican controlled Constantine personal Jesus. The personal Jesus. <laughs> which is we can't love our neighbors as ourselves and we can't treat others like we'd like to be treated. Although we can give our best effort, yes. But according, according to the way the book was written and the perspective w w was revealed, to go around striving, striving, striving to live that way, striving to live that way, is goes against everything that Jesus taught. It goes against everything Jesus taught. And to go around striving to live, live that way and to teach others to live that way and to expect others to want to believe that teaching when it's, when it's broadcasted or presented in a conversation, the book goes on to say that that living that way is the ultimate unforgivable sin that takes a, 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 an individual to hell. And it, and it doesn't, and it's totally different from all the other sins like smoking, cussing, drinking, being gay is one of them. It, being gay is no different than smoking or drinking or, you know, or eating food, you know. Most people don't even see that eating food is a sin. Well, yeah, eating food is a sin. And then it can turn into overeating and people get fat and unhealthy and now they're eating all kinds of, you know, everything is a sin, basically. When one starts to look at it, everything can be a sin. It's just a style how to live. There's nothing wrong. If someone wants to live how they want, more power to them. Let them live how they want. But some people don't like that. But the book is the book shares information that it it isn't a, it isn't all it isn't the sin nature known as the sin nature you know everything that 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 one that's stuck in the old one that's stuck in the old interpretation the personal Jesus how it was taught one that's stuck in that morality that particular morality well they always emphasize the sin nature is what takes someone to hell. And this book totally, totally dispels that whole idea, that whole, that whole way of living. And it, and it proves it through the parables of Jesus. And the golden rule, which is, love your neighbor as yourself, or do unto others as you have them do unto you. The golden rule is, is one of the famous sayings of Jesus, and he's quoted all the time. He says, can't you see Jesus is saying, he's teaching us, he's telling us that we're supposed to, to love our neighbors as ourselves and practice the golden rule. But what most people don't comprehend is that Jesus is being sarcastic when he's saying that. Jesus is being sarcastic. And, and when one looks at the word sarcasm in the dictionary, it says this. One thing is said, but another is intended. For instance, wonderful weather today, isn't it? But the weather is actually raining, dark clouds, and stormy, and yucky, and gooey, and humid, and sticky. Ugh, monsoon weather. Yuck. So when Jesus went around telling everyone in the, in, 
In the Bible, the new interpretation, the personal Jesus, he was being sarcastic and he was saying, yes, and he was teaching the apostles this too. He's telling the apostles. He was telling the apostles, unless you learn how to love your neighbor as yourself, you shall in no ways enter the kingdom of heaven. But he was being sarcastic. This spoken from a point of view called sarcasm. In other words, he was telling them, Try as hard as you want to try and love your neighbors as yourself, apostles, as well as he was teaching all the rest of the people in the public. But he would take his apostles aside and give them extra emphasis on the teachings. But the apostles had no idea where Jesus was coming from. Not a clue. Not a clue at all. And Jesus knew, knew that he would, if he was to be straight up honest with them, that they would, they would totally close their eyes. They would, they would just totally clam up. They would totally reject him. But what, what Jesus was doing is he was breaking up the fallow ground. And so he was teaching his disciples and bringing his disciples to despair. But they, weren't, they didn't get what Jesus was saying. They would only get what he was saying after he died and he rose again. And he sent back the Holy Spirit to touch their hearts. He sent back the Holy Spirit to touch their hearts. And it was only the Apostle Paul, who was an enemy of the Lord and persecuted the Lord, and after the Lord died and he rose again, according to the story, Apostle Paul was visited by the Lord. And the, and the Jesus used Apostle Paul to get the real message out to the apostles, to the rest of the apostles and all the rest of the people. And it was Apostle Paul who used to go around and persecute all the Christians and Jesus and Apostle Paul was glad when Jesus was put to death and he died and now he's out of here. One day, Apostle Paul, according to the Bible story, he got on his horse and he was going to go out to town to persecute some more Christians. And on his way out to town, the Lord God Almighty Jesus came to him in a vision and a light and spoke to him plainly. Plain, pl plainly as though he was living. He said, Saul, Saul. Why do the why does the why do you continue to kick against the pricks and persecute me? And, and, and according to the story, Paul says, Lord, is that you? God, I recognize that voice. Holy shit. And, and, and at that point, the Lord Jesus Christ himself took Apostle Paul to a mountaintop and explained things to Apostle Paul clearly where he was coming from. And at that point, it was Apostle Paul that came down off the mountaintop with private, private lessons from the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty. And he marched back into town and he started teaching where Jesus was really coming from to all the people, to all the leaders, because he was kicked out of government now. When he came back with his new message, all of a sudden all the government kicked his ass out. So now he was on his own. And he was going around and he was teaching all the people what the Lord Jesus actually meant when he was sharing his teachings. Which, which is mainly summed up in all the parables that he said. That he said. All the clues are found in the parables that he was said. So he, he was teaching the people this. He was teaching the government this. And he was teaching the apostles this. And for the first time finally the apostles eyes were starting to be opened up and they were starting to get one day at a time exactly what Jesus was actually getting at and how Jesus was using sarcasm to prove to the apostles that they can't love their neighbors as themselves no matter how hard they try they cannot love that they can try to love their neighbors as themselves and loving your neighbors yourself is a wonderful thing but they can't be perfect with it. They can't be perfect with it. And that was Jesus' point. Only Jesus can be perfect with it. Because Jesus is God. 
and only God is perfect. And God is the creator of everything, and no one can defeat the almighty perfect God. And that's where this book, that's where this book comes into play. And so if one is going out in the town or talking to their friends or their neighbors and they're encouraging them and using, you know, the golden rule as their base for their philosophy and their belief to run the society, well, they might want to read this book to get more insight as to that particular phrasing to be able to teach it with more perspective. <laughs> It's, once again, it's just evidence to consider, that's all. And look, the brother, the brother, the brother ordered extra copies from Tom Weaver, and he has three extra copies of this book right here. Three extra copies, look at that. Not to mention, this book is sold on Amazon for a dollar, two dollars, unused books. 50 cents, a dollar, two dollars. So it ain't gonna get, it ain't gonna be that much money to get the book. To, to at least look into some evidence to figure out what is the root Vatican Bible religious driving force to the whole, the whole society. And this book exposes it all, has a total audit on it right here. And this is a pastor, and he pastored a church and he changed his whole teaching in the church when he learned this information. And he learned it through his own studies. He learned it through his own studies because as he was studying the, the parables of Jesus, something wasn't making any sense with the parables. Something wasn't making any sense. And he, and he, and he finally had this epiphany moment. He saw something and then he started looking into it more and more. And all of a sudden he found something he never saw before. So he wrote a book and published it and started teaching it and passing the book out to the public. But it didn't become very popular. It didn't become very popular. See, that's the thing. Because people are, the old bad habit is to go around and teach everyone that we're supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves and do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Treat others as we would have, want to have them treated. This is, this is vital evidence as far as the modern interpretation to the Bible, which backs up the Vatican's religious dominant rule over all the countries, the way it's been for thousands, for hundreds of years, ever since 2,000 years ago when Constantine and the board members came out with the new version to the Bible, which used to be known as an astrology version. But the brother's saying, even with the modern interpretation, personal Jesus version, there's a whole new way to interpret that, which sheds insight on a, a solution to the societal dilemma, a solution to the, to the societal dilemma. And that includes being sardine canned together in these neighborhoods to where no one is allowed to, no, everyone is expect, expected to stay shut the fuck up. And we don't want to hear any new information you got to share, but especially just shut the fuck up. That's really what it comes down to because we're feeling disturbed. Why is that? Because everyone's sardine canned cl close together. So this book sh sheds insight on even on all this sardine canning. Where, where people don't feel comfortable expressing themselves so that when they're in the house or in the backyard or the front yard, they don't raise their voice and cry out and share the latest news from the courtroom steps like back in the old days, the town criers used to be able to go to stand on the court steps and cry out in the town with a loud voice, cry out in the town and that was eventually eliminated. And, and the only place to cry out is the neighborhood yard. It's the only place to cry out now. Because if anyone goes out in the town and starts crying out, they're gonna get shot.
And that's why the politicians don't go out into the town and cry out, because they will be shot. And if, the, and if the politicians were to go around, if the politicians were to go around town and reveal the evidence that's written in this book, or even to start start dare talking about the private maritime information, the maritime system, and expose the maritime system, all the truth that there is to know in the maritime system. Like this book shares all kinds of truth in the modern interpretation of the Bible, which most people have not ever heard. And if they were to hear it, they would feel so fucking uncomfortable. They would shoot someone straight up and especially out in the public. They'll be shot and no one will know who fucking shot them because they'll be from behind a building somewhere. They'll be aiming the gun right on them with a silencer. Take them right the fuck out. Poof. That is the sad reality. But remember, even at that, it's just evidence to consider. That's all. But for the most part, people got common sense and they could say to themselves, yeah. And then think on this. Someone out in the town crying, sharing evidence consistently all the time is no different than a baby that's being raised by a mother or a father that's not very loving and not very caring. And all they're going to do with that baby that that, that that baby instinctually knows that it's been born into a shitty situation and all it wants to do is cry all the time because it doesn't feel very good. All the parent wants to do is go to the child quickly and say, shut the fuck up. And they don't want to have a real conversation to get to the bottom and look at evidence why the child continues to cry and raise its voice and be so fucking loud. As evidence to consider, it could be that. Yeah, the town crier could, or the, or the neighborhood crier could be a child that's living in an environment that it's a bunch of, it does not feel comfortable in. Because the expectation in the society is to shut the fuck up and just do what you're told. And a child instinctually knows, uh, no, 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 no. That's not the universal mother. That's not the universal mother. That's the fake mother. The child knows instinctually. And so the cry out remains and it keeps going. Until the fake mother wants to have a real conversation to get to the bottom of what's really going on around here as evidence to consider. And then at that point, <laughs> with the evidence when it's presented over and over and over again until it's seen clearly, and one can have a conscious choice and decision with the evidence, then at that point, there's, there is the capacity for the fake mother to remain fake or start to become real or to all different degrees. I mean, one, one could say this, who the fuck moves into a new neighborhood and never gets to know who their neighbors are? Who the fuck does this? I mean, as evidence to consider, one can ask this question legitimately. Who the fuck moves into a new neighborhood and never gets to know who the neighbors are that are living there? Who the fuck does this?
there's no attempt to reach out to get to know anyone in the neighborhood. No attempt to, to start talking to someone at the neighbors and get to know who they are. Although they've been living here for 15, 20 fucking years. <laughs> and, and the neighbor that's been living here 20 years is, is starting conversations in the air with indirect conversations and there has been no attempt to want to engage with the conversation it's just shut the fuck up I'm uncomfortable here shut up you're being too fucking loud and offensive I'm offended could it be that there's something wrong with that picture? Just evidence to consider, that's all. I suppose one could look at it this way. It would be no different than someone migrating across the border and coming into a country and wanting to take the country over and tell everyone in the country, no, you don't get to work here no more. Fuck you, you go live on the fucking street. I'm taking over your fucking job. It's the, it could be seen, just evidentially looking at it, it could be seen as the same perspective, the same idea. Here the neighbor's been living in the neighborhood for 20 years, and here comes a new neighbor all of a sudden, and wants to start telling, every, <laughs> telling the neighbor how to run his business. <laughs> and engage in no conversation. They just automatically move in and start wanting to regulate everything. And there's, there's been no attempt to have a conversation to get to know who this, who this neighbor is that's been living here successfully for 20 fucking years. Successfully being a loud as fuck fucker for 20 years. And a public television show out in the fucking public. Not just in this state, Another state, Washington state also. Just wants to show up and say, you're being too loud and I'm offended. Would you please, you know, basically, you know, shut up. Well, there might be a reason for the cry out. <laughs> there, might, the, there, there might need to be a conversation, a real conversation to get to the bottom of what's going on here. But you see, if one engages with a conversation with someone, then they might have to, have to look at evidence that they've never seen before. They might get to know someone that they've never seen before, never knew before. They might learn something. In other words, 
they might actually <laughs> actually feel like that it'd be a good idea to maybe uh, <laughs> maybe join the movement. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or at least learn how to express oneself too loudly, rather than to just go along to get along with the with the you know the what would be considered a uh, a societal movement. But it's the societal movement that's been a lot been around and. and been around for such a long time. The society has been the, been this way for such a long time. It's very obvious coming straight from the doctor. The only thing he has to say to anybody is shut the fuck up and stop your crying, little baby. And the doctor does not want to engage in a conversation or does the doctor want to answer the affidavit because the doctor knows that he's facing the truth here. And it's the doctor who's actually probably going to have to more than likely start initiating some adjustments. You know, like adjust the treasury accounts as treasury, and you know, for the credit, because the children are the creditors to the bankruptcy, adjust the creditor accounts. Or at least start talking about it or give us some clues, you know, stuff like that. See, but the problem is, the big problem is, is that the doctor can't, can't say a word because he's locked in a prison. So it would be no different than the neighbor. Except for the fact that the doctor neighbor is living in the neighborhood, which gives the doctor neighbor a little more openness to be able to at least confess something. But even that might be too much for a doctor neighbor. But it is a more open setting because the neighborhood is considered the private. It's much different than the public, much different. And yes, because of all the sardine canned way of living that the doctor has forced upon all the neighbors. I mean, look at it that way. One can look at it that way. The neighbors are just considered slaves, and, the, and this gets all in, all in, you know, into the election with Kamala and Trump. How Biden and Kamala have been running the country, and it's been nothing but let new neighbors just come on into the neighborhood. And now they're going to start telling everybody that's been living in the neighborhood in the country for 200 years now. Here comes a new, a new, a new, someone new to come into the neighborhood to look. And now they're going to start telling all the neighbors or the closest neighbor how they need to start living now. And they're going to be saying, hey, I, I just migrated across the border here. Now I'm stuck because they can't cross the border and go back to their country unless Trump becomes president. And he's probably going to kick their fucking asses out and send them back anyway. <laughs> That's the only way that the neighbor's going to leave. <laughs> Spirit, symbolically speaking, not saying that the neighbor has to leave. But the, but the brother's just using metaphor, allegory, pictures of, of what it's like, you know, here this, here this neighbor moved and didn't, didn't realize that the neighbor was, was going to move into a loud neighborhood next to a loud neighbor. It's been here being loud for 20 years. Although it's more, it's, it, the loudness has expanded from the microphone hiding inside the house feeling insecure to just going straight out to the fucking backyard and just speaking straight into the air with no microphone. It's still, it's still probably more or less the same, the same loudness. I'm sure this microphone carries inside this house quite loudly outside. It ain't no different than having a radio show, a television show, or band practice. 
it used to be a long time ago in society, band practice in the neighborhoods were celebrated because they would be thinking to themselves, oh, I, we're, we're gonna become the famous neighborhood if this band strikes it rich. And they're always gonna say, yeah, I was from such and such city, such and such state, and I lived in such and such, such neighborhood. And then the neighbors would use that as a point of celebration to be proud with, saying, yep, that's one of ours. We, were, we helped shape him and raise him, so a little bit of us are in that brother successful out on the stage with the band, right? I mean, it could be looked at that way. You know? Whose problem is it? Was it, the, was it the migrant's problem that he moved into a loud country? That he realized he moved into a loud country? He thought he was just going to come in and have his way because the politicians guaranteed him that? Well, that's why the migrants are coming in, because Biden and Harris promised them it was going to be an easy takeover when they moved in. And now the migrants are starting to figure out it ain't as easy as that they were told. And the migrants are starting to figure out they were lied to and that the migrants are being used. And in other words, the migrants are figuring out they got fucked because they're going to have to go right the fuck back where they came from unless they go through the process to learn how to get, get along with the neighborhood and the neighbor. as evidence to consider, that's all. Anyway, it's been an hour and 50, 52 minutes and 32 seconds. Not saying that the brother is all correct and all right with what he's having to share, but that is what the brother has to share. And that will be evidence in a conversation if a neighbor wants to have a real conversation and start talking, have car It doesn't have to be one day. It could be a little bit here and there. At least say hi. At least say something. There ain't even been a fucking hi. The only fucking words have been shut up. And other than that, it's been away from a distance. And then the rest of the, anything really said has been shut up. And then wanted to, wanted to express why, why the shut up needs to happen. Well, I'm offended, so please shut up. We need to come up, shut up. Would you, we're supposed to treat ourselves as we want to be treated, love our neighbors. I mean, come on now. <laughs> I mean, that ain't a conversation. That's coming into a fucking new company and start calling all the fucking shots. You don't just walk into a company, start calling all the fucking shots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who does that? You get to know everyone in the company. Yeah, you start to get to know everyone in the company and you earn some respect. Earn some respect. Respect is earned when one starts having a conversation. It starts getting to know others. Evidence to consider, that's all. Not saying that it is. Not saying that it is. Just evidence to consider. It could be looked upon that way. And, and this would be part of the conversation. <laughs> as well as other things. Starting to get to know who the neighbor is. I mean, I mean, think about it. Maybe it has been po a popular thing to move into a neighborhood and never talk to the neighbors and get to know who the neighbors are. Maybe it's been a popular thing here lately for the last 50 years under fake democratic rule. Fake democratic rule. Maybe it's become popular in the past 50 years under fake democratic rule to move into a neighborhood and never get to know who the fucking neighbors are. Never even engage in a conversation. Never introduce oneself. Say, this is who I am. 
this is what I do for a living, this is who I am, da da da, and, and to share something. Everything's all about secrecy and then want to keep the fucking secret, a secret takeover. I mean, who the fuck does that? I mean, when I first moved into this neighborhood, I made it a point to go around and talk to all the fucking neighbors. I, I initiated, I was the new one, so I wanted to let them know who I am. To let them know that some jackass didn't just move into the fucking neighborhood. Someone they could trust and who was honest moved into the neighborhood. Now the neighbors are thinking, oh, ooh, ooh, we know who this guy is now. Wow, cool.
This thing's been recording all this time. The brother's out in the backyard scooping. Goddamn three hours worth of fucking native land.